Most GPS approaches are pretty straightforward. Just load the approach in the avionics and keep the needles crossed. There's no need to tune radios, listen to Morse code, or worry about to from flags. But don't let that simplicity lull you to sleep. There are some important details to consider before flying a GPS approach. For example, most GPS approaches will begin with a vector from ATC. As the controller sets you up to intercept the final approach course a few miles outside the final approach fix. That means you'll be assigned a heading and told it's vectors for the RNAV approach. When you hear that phrase, make it a habit to activate vectors to final mode on your GPS. This will draw an extended final approach course on the map and highlight the final approach fix, making it easy to visualize where you are in relation to the runway. But while vectors to final is a quick way to activate the approach. Be careful with this feature, especially at busy airports. Controllers will sometimes use initial or intermediate fixes for position reports or speed restrictions. For example, at Chicago Midway Airport, if you're being vectored for the RNAV approach to runway four left, you may be asked to maintain a certain speed until Jernu intersection. If you've already loaded vectors to final, that fix won't appear because it's outside the final approach fix. You'll have to scramble to reload the approach. A better idea is to start by loading the full approach, then activate vectors to final only when you know you're actually being vectored outside the final approach fix. That final approach fix is a critical point in an IFR flight. Before you descend to close to the ground and in instrument conditions, you should be absolutely certain that everything is configured properly and you know what to expect on the way down. This is no time for errors or uncertainty. First, make sure to monitor the status indicator on the GPS screen to see which type of approach you'll be flying. There are specific parameters that must be met in relation to your position and angle approaching the final approach fix in order for the LPV or LP approach to activate. If the GPS doesn't like what it sees, it will fall back to an LNAV approach. That means it's critical to confirm that you are seeing the type of approach you expected to see at the final approach fix. Match the minima line on the chart to the GPS screen. Knowing what type of approach you'll be flying also makes it easier to fly a smooth approach. LNAV approaches have a fixed sensitivity from the final approach fix to the missed approach point. So a two-dot deflection at one mile is the same lateral deviation as a two-dot deflection at five miles. On the other hand, an LPV approach's angular approach course means a two-dot deflection at one mile is much less than a two-dot deflection at five miles. Far from the runway, deviations call for larger heading corrections while flying an LPV approach. Close to the runway, smaller corrections are required. In addition to the type of approach, you'll also need to confirm what type of vertical guidance to expect. The key question to ask is whether the glide slope you see displayed is a true glide slope or an advisory one. If it's LNAV plus V or LP plus V, you must adhere to any step-down fixes because obstacle clearance is not assured on an advisory glide path. You can still fly a constant descent rate, but verify you're at the correct altitude as you cross each step-down fix. And make sure you level out at MDA. This is not a decision altitude. Two final checks to make at the approach fix. Navigation source and autopilot. On some GPS models, there's a CDI button that must be pushed to change the navigation source from nav radio to GPS. It's critical that that screen matches the type of approach you are flying. Otherwise, the CDI will not be providing the correct information. This has caught more than one pilot by surprise, so take a moment to double check, and if you're using the autopilot or flight director, Verify it's an approach mode with glide slope armed. Again, there have been accidents caused by a properly configured GPS 
but an incorrectly configured autopilot. Once you've passed the final approach fix, the next key point is the bottom of the approach. Remember that visual descent points only apply to non-precision approaches. So if you're flying an LPV approach, you can disregard that V symbol entirely. There are some other chart symbols to consider as you approach the runway environment. On RNAV approaches, a gray shaded line from the MDA to the runway indicates that the visual segment below the MDA is clear of obstructions on a 34 to 1 slope, roughly 200 feet at 1 mile. If you don't see a gray line, that means the visual segment is not free of obstructions. That doesn't mean it's unsafe, merely that you need to be in good visual conditions before you descend to the runway and you should not follow the advisory glide slope all the way to the threshold. You'll also occasionally see a note that says VGSI and RNAV glide path not coincident. The chart will show the VASI's descent angle and threshold crossing height, so you can compare it to the approach angle if you'd like. Finally, remember that GPS isn't just for RNAV approaches. When flying an ILS approach, it's perfectly fine to use the GPS for the initial and missed approach segments. You're only required to fly the final approach segment with the localizer and glide slope, and the GPS overlay may provide better situational awareness during the other segments.